For my baked ham, I need a large gammon joint with a rind on. All I do is pour over some gleaming black treacle. I find the rich and slightly bitter molasses flavour a perfect partner to the salty sweet meat. And then I parcel it up in three layers of silver foil so that it rather resembles my rather shoddy Christmas wrapping. I blast the ham in a very hot oven for half an hour and then turn it right down and leave it for hours and hours, for at least 12, though up to 24 would be just fine at this low, low temperature. And while it sweetly steams in its Christmas wrapping, I can ignore it and just throw myself headlong into the festivities. The great unveiling. And don't worry, I've got asbestos hands. It's like playing past the parcel. Oh. I could have this smell as a scented candle so happily. And you can see that because it's been cooked so slowly and wrapped so tightly in foil, there's very little shrinkage. That's good because I like to have a lot of hot ham and then enough for leftovers. And that wonderful pool of treacly juices I will spoon out later and then drizzle over the ham as I carve it. And while that's it, I'm going to get on with the glaze. It's such a simple affair. No heating, just stirring together. I've got some demerara sugar there, which gives gorgeous crunch. I want some Dijon mustard. And again, some black treacle. And as I said, just stir together. Before the ham can make its glorious and glossy entrance, all that's needed is a little rind removal, which means cutting away the skin until a layer of fat remains. Then I do what my mother always did to her baked ham, which is score the fat into diamond shapes and stud it with cloves. I pour the dark glaze over and put the ham back in a hot oven for 20 minutes. By which time it is burnished and blisteringly hot. Once it's on its board, it's ready to be brought triumphantly to the table.